This is Seth David for SchoolofBookkeeping.com, bringing to you another special screencast, another answer. This time we're talking about how to catch up on entering expenses in QuickBooks Online. Entering many expense receipts for completed or invoiced work. Just took over bookkeeping for a small construction business. The owner has used QuickBooks Pro 2012 to create estimates and invoices. To date, I have a large box of receipts going back to the first of the year, which were never recorded in any bookkeeping program. These receipts were paid for with cash, credit cards, and checks to many different vendors. I am piecing together which expense records belong to which invoiced completed jobs for profit or loss, profit and loss statements, improved estimating and tax purposes. Because we are converting four subcontractors into employees, I upgraded to QBO Plus with payroll. Can you recommend the best way for me to enter these records into QBO Plus? So, of course, the first answer is enter them, right? You have enter expenses under vendors, expense, right? I can enter an expense. And I guess what probably needs a little clarification in terms of the question that's being asked is, you know, my first question is I, I get that they're paid for with cash, credit cards, and checks. The question is whose credit cards? The cash is obvious. If it was paid for with cash, then it's treated like uh, an owner contribution into the company, right? Because I assume it's the owner's cash that was used, not the company's cash, unless somebody actually took a cash withdrawal. But even then, the cash withdrawal would come out probably as like a distribution to the owner. And then when the cash is used to pay for things, you bring back the receipt and you book the entry debit the expense and credit owner contribution into the books. Now this is if you want to do it individually for each one and that will give you the most detail such that you can then piece it together and look at a report like the unbilled costs report to see uh, you know what needs to be billed back to customers and so on and so forth. Assuming that you don't want to go to the time and expense of entering in every single uh, expense individually then what I would suggest is organizing it in Excel first. And what I would do is I would organize it by month, and then within each month, I would organize it by category, right? So you have, uh, you know, I'm not sure what kind of business this is, but let's say it's a construction company, right? So you might have materials that you purchased. So you, you know, for the month of January of 2014, I would have in the spreadsheet, you know, all the, you know, in other words, I would itemize them in Excel or summarize them. You take your receipts and say, here are all the receipts for uh, uh, lumber that was bought or, you know, uh, uh, wood, the carpentry that was paid for uh, during the month of January and list them in Excel. And then in QuickBooks, just book a journal entry uh, for the lump sum total each month. But your bottom line, at the end of the day, you still need to have the right expense category, right, and the total dollar amount for that. If you need it broken out by vendor, then you're almost back to just entering everything individually. You could theoretically, assuming each vendor is paid for the same expense, then you could break that up the same way so that you could enter an expense and just post it on the last day of the month. So let's say it was January 31st of 2014 and for this this way you would choose one vendor right so let me choose a insurance company vendor right and of course the account in that case would be insurance expense and what I would do is all the insurance paid for during the uh, month I don't have insurance expense on this books it's just a sample set of books that I made up but I think you get the picture what I would do is I would group everything by month and then by category and vendor within that and then post one expense um, and then you have to enter a payment method here so what I might do is um, uh, well, I, th I think you can actually leave this blank, uh, but the account that it comes out of, I would do something like a petty cash account, right? Especially, well, I do petty cash. See, and this is where it gets tricky. I would do petty cash if, in fact, uh, everything was paid for, presumably, outside of the scope of the company's own means. In other words, for cash, certainly petty cash. If the credit cards that were used were personal credit cards, then I would use petty cash and maybe indicate that you know this much was from credit card payments. Uh, the checks that were written. If these were checks that were written out of the company and you want to reconcile the bank account properly, then you're really stuck with actually recording each check individually. So hopefully that helps gives you some insight. If you, if you want to provide more clarification, uh, that may be why nobody responded, to be honest, because it's, it's just not that clear um, where these payments were coming from and what the ultimate objective is here. But uh, so that's the best answer I could give. You ask a general question, you get a general answer, unfortunately. But um, if you can provide more specific information, I would be happy to provide a follow-up response and, uh, and help out any way that I can.
Again, I'm Seth David from schoolofbookkeeping.com where I go out and hunt for your questions so I can provide the video answers and I put them right here in the answers section of our schoolofbookkeeping.com website open and available to the public. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you on the web.